They got me losing my mind. Mark Menard, the visionary behind Elevating Beyond, presents a groundbreaking live event, Minutes with Millionaires. This elevational event is for business owners, leaders, and their teams, as each of our speakers bring extensive experience mixed with real and raw emotion. Learn how to lead through the chaos, manage your stress, create massive new revenue, and get your hustle on. And for the first time ever, a two-hour interactive Q&A session. We're talking massive truth bombs. No one would invest in me. First of all, you've got to go and do whatever it takes. Do what it takes to get to where you want to go. If I want something I have never had, I must do something I have never done before. Do what you love and make it big. Go to markmenard.net for more information and to order your video now. Want to rise above what holds you back? These are the stories of those fighting that battle. It might also be the story of you. I'm Dan Waldschmidt, author of Edgy Conversations and strategist of billion dollar companies all over the world. This is Mark Menard, author of The Story of You, the guy who knows a thing or two about never giving up. You're listening to Elevating Beyond. Let's get started. As a business owner, when do I know it's time for team members to move on from the team before it uh, poses a threat to the moral and the health of the company? And it's towards anybody, so whoever wants well, to that's, chime in. That's you, Mark. Well, everyone yeah, should right, have that yeah. wants to answer it, sure, because everyone's said. All right, Chanel, I'll act like this mic's working. Uh, that's a great question. Um, so I always start with team members if they're willing to grow. That's the, the key thing I look at. So try to coach them, see if they're willing to grow. I don't like anyone to be surprised when they're going to be fired. So like as a leader, make sure you've given them a chance. You've explained it very clearly. You can't beat around the bush. You can't think about feelings. You can't sugarcoat. You have to tell them. You can say, I love you, but here's what the problem is, and here's what you need to fix. So you need to fix this. If this doesn't get fixed, and then you see over time how it's going. And after a certain amount of time, if it's not getting better, you have to be clear. If you're not clear with people, we were saying it yesterday, you're being unkind. You're actually not helping them out by enabling them. And I know that because I let, I'm about to pass two minutes, huh? So, Who's the, what's the name of this lady? It's Chanel. So if they're not, I'll give you the mic. So if they're not willing to grow and you're clear with them, then you need to fire them after a certain point. Because what will happen is you'll start losing other good team members because you're allowing this person to get away with what you're telling everyone else they have to do. And I've, I've learned that the hard way. It's like the, the basketball coach that won't bench the all-star player that's not following all the rules and the morale of the whole team doesn't win the championships. When he benches them and says, you all have to follow the same rules and guidelines or else we cut you. So, all right, who wants the baton next? I'll, I'll say yeah. <laughs> As someone who owns uh, Chanel, someone who owns a lot of restaurants, yeah. I can tell you, stop saying fire. You and I don't fire anybody. That employee fires themselves. Yeah, exactly. So you always need to tell yourself, I'm not firing anybody. What you, you can yeah. give two strikes, three strikes, 400 strikes. And what you do, it's letting them know. You give the first strike, you tell them you have three to five, okay, you're on number two. Next time, you're out of here. So get that out, and you talk about when do you let them go. If you get cancer, you don't stop the cancer, what happens? It ravages your body. That person will become cancer. Listen, there's, there's, two, there's two employees you hire. There's an eagle and there's a turkey. If you keep the turkeys around too long, it makes the eagles fly away. So you gotta get rid of that turkey, give them a chance. But like Mark said, if they're not coachable, if they're not teachable, you gotta cut that leg off to save the body but never say you fire anybody, they fire themselves. Let me give you the 10 second, 10 second answer. It, the no, fact, oh, so, so, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that, 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 look, so th this is like another, no, no offense, What's it, tell me the name is Chanel? Chanel. Chanel. Chanel, so like this is an example of one of these really stupid things we get into where we, we ask ourselves questions we already know the answer to. If you're asking the question, should this person be here, the answer is always That's no. Right. That's right. So you just say, I'm sorry, it's not working out. And it's, it's, it's really that simple. What you said about fear 
is a reason why you you haven't done it. You 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 might if it's a salesperson, you're afraid you're gonna lose revenue. If it's an mm -hmm. IT person, maybe you pay this person money, and you're like, well, if they leave, can I find someone to work for that money? Well, that's a whole other problem, right? But but the fact that you're asking the question tells me the first thing you should do tomorrow just is fire. just go fire them. So again, uh, not rocket science, but. Anyone else want to say something? No, I think it's like I, Captain yes, Obvious. You guys here. covered that Captain clearly. Obvious, you know. so, the only last I agree with I all of you. It, going off what Dan just said, 10 seconds exactly, is ask yourself if they were to come in and want to work for me today, would I hire them again? Mm -hmm. Knowing what I know now, if the answer is no, Out. fire them. Or let them fire themselves. Let them fire themselves. All right, the next one is from Felicia, and she said, what would you recommend for a person who has $40,000 in savings? Uh, uh, should they invest into a mutual fund or pay off owed mortgage first? Whoa, for me, uh, I have the mic? All right, so, <laughs> hey, listen, I invest in me. I'm a little bit different. I invest in me. And, and that's what I teach, teach millennial over there. I invest in me. I don't put things in mutual funds. I don't put things in the stock market. I put things in Bill Courtright and what I can do to grow. And I invest in my businesses to create residual income. My businesses grow, but that's, that's me. So I'm not the right one to so, answer so, that one. But tell, tell us what you mean by that. I mean, I, you I would, say 100% so, of the money would go into education, so, training. So what all would, different things. So I'll build different businesses, different courses, different things. I'm always looking to make money while I sleep. So I'll invest in different companies, I'll invest in people, I'll invest yeah. in things, but I'm looking for things that can make me income yeah. while I'm sleeping. That is one of my things, and I like five streams of income coming in at all times from the businesses. So if I'm investing, if I have $40,000, I'm kind of looking, okay, what can I build out of this and use this money to turn that 40,000 into 200,000? That's my, that's yeah. the game. Does that make sense? Yep. And, and, and going off from what Bill's saying too, there's different, see, see, I would need more information, but there's different seasons of life. I agree investing in me, but maybe. That's just me, though. I mean, that's just the way I am. You know, I, I would invest in yeah, Bill too. Yeah, that's just me. But that's no, 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 no. But that's really, just, if you have forty thousand, so I think having liquid is very important. Yeah, I like money. It's very important to have liquid cash available because I've been through the struggle of having all credit card debt, mm -hmm. having to go to the banks for loans, and having some liquid is available. So I don't know what your situation is. If you have forty thousand, I would say to keep some liquid. Like, don't put all that to pay your mortgage off. But, and then have no liquid cash available. Mm -hmm. It just depends where you are. Also, if you own a company, I don't know what you are, where yeah, you are we, in we your season. And yeah. I started a yeah. simple IRA for my company and all my owners, and I invest different things into that. I invest in myself, and I also keep a certain amount in savings. And I could dive deeper into how I invest in that. I, I, would, say, I would say if you have $1,500 in credit debt, pay the $1,500 off. Don't try to pay the mortgage off because what's going to happen, you're going to see that big mortgage, 100, 400, whatever it is, $1,000. And you're never going to chop down the tree. You're just going to be nubbing at it. But if you pay those small credit card debt off, if you're paying $25 a month, now that's $2,500, $25 a month you have. So my belief is, like Mark, I love having an umbrella in my garage for when it rains. Because something's going to happen. What is the Murphy's Law? When something can happen, it will happen at the worst possible time. So if you have that $40,000, we don't know your situation. You might need a new transmission in your car. So put $1,800 in transmission yeah. and then keep the rest of money. Yeah. You have to find someone who's doing what you want to do. Find at least five to 10 people and ask them. You have 40,000, but don't ever risk that whole 40,000 yeah. because you'll need it sometime whether you have a business there's a thing called, most businesses fail, I believe, because of, of lack of capital. Cash, yeah. They have oh, cash exactly. okay. in the bank. Now, there's cash. people out there who say, there's people out there who say, no, have all the, all the debt in the world. Because when you die, you don't pay. That's stupid. That's stupid. <laughs> who, Keep, who up here agrees with that? No. 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 Um, but a lot of, there's a lot of people, there's accountants, there's, there's, there's financial people who believe yeah. that. So yeah. keep yeah, the, yeah, the, as much cash that. as you can. <laughs> and I believe at a time you have to use OPM, other people's yeah. money. And but then, if you're mortgage, I mean, and uh, by the way, uh, not not wait, not, wait, wait. Stop uh, talking. Uh, uh, not to oversimplify. Yeah, not, yeah, not, not not to oversimplify again. Again, ten second answer. If your mortgage is four percent, can you make four percent on an investment? Yeah. Yeah. Probably you can pay seven or eight percent in your mutual fund. Okay, right. that's the lame thing. Can you make four thousand percent investing into yourself? Yes. And do you need some money 
for a rainy day, absolutely. So that's, you know, it's like, these are some no-brainers. If you're paying 25% yeah. on your credit card, pay that off. Yeah, get rid of the debt. Get rid of the credit cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah but don't pay off your mortgage. Okay. That's, no. just, that's just stupid. Don't do, don't do that. The biggest thing I would say is, do what makes your heart. See, because yeah. I believe I believe in being debt-free, having my mortgage paid for, because I like to sleep at night, because I know what it was like moving from home to home with 14 siblings. So myself, I love to sleep at night and say, you know what? I love having a mortgage paid for. I love having my yeah. cars paid for. It's just me. It's a good feeling. You have to feeling. ask what makes you, if you're happy with $8 million worth of debt, God bless you. God right. bless. There's people out there like that. But find out what works for you. Stop worrying what works for everyone else. And uh, that's my piece of advice. Cool. All right. The next one is Ladea. And she said, what would it take for a millionaire? And I'm guessing it's asking one of you guys to invest into an entrepreneur with a very strong brand. Let What's me take that. Let, let me take that. There you go. Everyone says it's they a have a brand. Yeah. That's a bunch of crap. Everyone's a brand strategist, a yeah. brand professional. No one's going to believe it. Listen, you come to me, I don't care what you say, what you do. Tell me how you, listen, I want to know how much money you want. When am I going to get paid? Yeah. This is not a long-term thing. I want my money quick. Yeah. Yeah. Just that. No, listen, and unless, you, unless you have the new Snickers bar, the new M&Ms, most people, there's a thousand, there's a million of you coming to us yeah. saying, I got, listen, I got the next KFC. Yeah, yeah, my, 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 my uh, we, 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 we get, our, our, we, we get lots of emails from people lots. saying, yes. would, you, would you invest? And I think the number's gone down because I, I've even told my chief of staff, like, our answer is we're not currently investing anymore. That, yeah. that kind of puts some of these at bay. But, there are real, three real things that I, that I determine on. One, am I going to be surrounded by people who are uh, smarter than me? Uh, and like yourself, I'm a college dropout twice. That's not hard. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by all these smart people around me who have got this specialized knowledge. Secondly, are, are we doing something big enough to change the world? I don't want to do small sh I don't want to do small. If you're, if you're doing like a different shade of carpet or something, probably not my thing. I want something big. And then third, does it nurture my soul? So when, you, when you're presenting to people who have money and you want their money, you should deliver it in a way that you know does something inside that person. Like what, yes. what are they truly passionate about? So, you know, um, if, you're, if you're downloading your business plan off the web, if you're downloading your pitch deck off the web and expecting that to work, yeah, I mean, Bill, what do you think? I mean, I, you know, I, it's probably I, not gonna. I totally agree with yeah. Dan. For me to invest in somebody, well, I have one rule, and I'm, it's a little because I'm a little older now, and I'm kind of at a different stage in my life, is that I will not work with anybody that gives me chaos. I refuse yeah, to have yeah. chaos in my life. Yeah, yeah. I like to live a well, peaceful yeah, existence, right? I like peaceful existence. I don't want chaos. So you can have the greatest plan in the world, and Dan is right. If you don't have a purpose and a passion and something that's special, hey, I'm not looking. And I get a lot. I get, especially in the health field. I mean, everybody has the new supplement, the new yeah. workout program, the new, and for me, there are some good things out there. And I've seen some good things come across my desk and, and Super Millennial will tell you, he goes, we're not investing in that? I go, nope, because this guy is chaotic. Yeah. I can't yeah. live with that. That's just the way I work. Well, it had the basics with business. You don't have the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, aren't you shocked at the number of people who don't well, have here, a clear here, business let, plan? Let, let, no. me, let, me, let me be real. They don't know what they want. When I started my company, it was the recession. Okay. No one would invest in me. Yeah. I couldn't get a loan. Like, first of all, you've got to go and do whatever it takes to start building yourself and showing and proving that you can build something that people have something to invest in. Don't just sit there and say, I have this great idea. I want all of you to give me a bunch of money. Because like yeah, you have to earn your respect that. first yeah. too. And, yeah, and the something. person you're getting money from has probably done that. I, I, I guess so. Like if you like if they're gonna yeah. talk to me about raising money, I'm like, I've built four businesses, I've never raised a penny. Yeah. I've never so raised I, a penny. It, so you're coming to me telling me you want my money? I'm like, screw you, so go do what I did. I was telling Dan a story about my oldest daughter. Out. You don't need a hand my out. oldest I was telling yeah. I, I was telling um, Greg about my oldest daughter and okay. she has built this business and she's done amazing and she needed thirty thousand dollars. And she was growing. And I said, yeah, I will write you that check. Yeah. But here's the deal. I need you to go to 20 banks. And if you get 20 banks that turn you down, I'm going to write you that check because I know how hard you're working. And I know you're putting the time in. And you're doing the grind and hustle thing. And so she went. Bank number 15 gave her the number. And I said, the reason I had you do that is because you're growing. Yeah. And you need to understand that the banks are your partners yeah. and you're going to grow that way. If I give you the money, yeah. you're not growing. Mm -hmm. And that, but she knocked on fifth, the 15th one 
gave her the money. And she did it. And she did it. She did, right. she did it. And I know yeah. that step is going to help her grow. So I, I, I can't tell you the number a, of times people come to me wanting investment and I'll, I'll, I'll push back at them or even at church. Because yeah. in the South, we all go to church, right? So you go to, you'll bump into some brother, pray for me. I've got this great business idea. What have you done? Yeah, I what are you done doing? Anything. What work you, you talk doing? Talk to four people. Right. Talk to four people. Go and work. You, you want money? It's like, yeah. look, even Jesus got busy and threw over some money changers tables, right? I mean, yeah. look, yeah, you got to get off your ass and break some. He and did. then you come to me and ask for my money. Like you said, I spent three years, I built this thing, yeah. and we could make 400% more money, but I need a small loan, and here's how it's gonna work out. And then I, we got your back. I'm gonna yeah. write you a check. Yeah. That's how it's gonna happen. But you come to me and you say, I want your money to take an idea and turn it into a business. And that means really, here's how I hear that. You want me to yeah. pay your salary while you figure it out for three years. Yeah. Ah, get the it doesn't out. I mean, work. I got You're time today. Get out of here. And we lose. Get out of here. No, Jesus, get out of here. Jesus didn't say that though. Yeah, he didn't say that. <laughs> but he, he threw some demons out. He threw some demons out. You know what I mean? Without Woo! the bombs. Get out. Right. But yeah, so yeah. that's that's we love you, but that's that's, that's real it. talk. Sorry, that's, you guys laugh. Yeah. Be careful Sorry. what you ask for. <laughs> All right, Amarin asked, "What are the first steps you would recommend to somebody looking to move from paycheck to paycheck? They want to get out of the paycheck to paycheck life. What are the first steps you would tell somebody? Get out of debt. I, I, I got it. Can I just say one word? You got to know what you want. Uh, save? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I'll, I'll say it. Um, if you find yourself in a hole, the easiest thing to get out is stop digging the hole. The first step, I hate when people always say this, Dan, Mark, and, and Bill. Where do I find money? Where do you find money? My niece today back in Columbus, Ohio, 16 years old, has a landscaping company. Yard sales. My, my, my wife says, dear... Your niece just went across the street. They have a free riding mower. She went and got it, yeah. ran out of gas. She said, hey, how much do I owe uncle for some gas? Got it, cutting a house. Two hours later, she's cutting the neighbor's lawn, made 60 bucks. That's how you do it. You collect cans. You see someone having something at a yard sale and you say, mm -hmm. how can I make that money? Because listen, you want to be the person who signs the front of the check, not the back of the yep. check. And you do that by the simplest things. I hate when people say, how do I get money? If you live in a state where they still take pop bottles for a nickel, get carts of pop bottles. If you have to work a second or third job, that's what you have to do. You have to do whatever it takes legally to start that business. Listen, you guys don't know what we did. We could have uh, uh, went around and got horse manure and started our business. Don't worry about what people think. Do what it takes. Do what it takes to get to where you want to go. Yeah, I know Bill had to, do you mind if I go for a no, second? No, please, please. Greg covered it well. I have nothing else yeah, to say. That's, that's the answer really, right I have nothing yeah. else to say. And, 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 think, and right. also, be grateful that you have a job and, and don't just like go to work every day miserable saying, and, and really think about what do you want to do and keep doing things along the way. All of us here had to work multiple jobs. We wouldn't have this discussion if it was like, how do I get water? Right? Or how do I get gas for my car? No, no one has these questions. Yeah. Like, what do I do to get more water? I'm thirsty. You, you go and find water and you put it in your face. Right? That's all you do. That's right. right? It's, it's, and then we come to money. We're like, oh, but I don't know what to do. It's like, where, are the, where, is the, where is the money? It's your paycheck or maybe your side hustle. Or like you said, collecting cans. Uh, where I just came from in Michigan, you can return bottles and you get some change back. It's not, we, we overcomplicate it. Who is that person who, what's his name? Uh, Emron. Emron, Emron, yeah. do you have a $1,000 iPhone like I do? Maybe get a $100 phone. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe get a hundred dollars. Little things like that. Because I, I guarantee you, mm -hmm. Emron, if you yeah. buy yeah. things you don't yeah. need yeah. now, you will sell things you need later on in your life. Yeah. You have to, there's nothing wrong with a job. Be yeah. proud you have a job and work your job yeah. like you have millions of dollars in the bank going every day happy. Treat everyone the same. Don't go in there saying, I hate my job. Mm -hmm. Like I said before earlier, you get to go to your job. Right. But in the back of your mind, you say, you know what? I'm not stuck in this warehouse yeah. all my life. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm going somewhere else. That's so you right. smile every day and you figure out a way. Listen, uh, the, the great uh, Genghis Khan said, I will either find a way or I will make one. Yeah. Yeah. You got to make a way. Yeah. Let me just touch. Keep doing. That's all I want to say. Yeah. All right. The next one is... Chanel, again, uh, how does an entrepreneur differ from a business manager, owner, operator uh, that most people don't understand? Well, a, a manager doesn't have to pay the bills. Yeah, so uh, 
I, I like Randy Gage. I don't know if you guys know Randy, but Randy says an entrepreneur is an artist because they're trying to figure out things because they have a vision of what they want to build yeah. and they're outside that cage that we talk about. I'm talking like it's a mic. <laughs> you know why you do that to me, right? I mean, hey. so it's like they, they realize you have a dream, an entrepreneur is building the business. They're hiring the manager. They're hiring the people. The entrepreneur is a dreamer. Now here's the thing, I don't know about you guys, can't stop building stuff. One thing gets done, this is done, this project's over, I'm now gonna go build another one. Because it's art. Yes. It's artists, you're working at it, you're creating it, you're figuring it out from the ground uh, up. I, I think what she's asking too is, maybe they're not understanding how hard she works and not appreciating it as being an entrepreneur. And you have to think, figure ways to help share the vision with your team. Mm -hmm. And how do they differ? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, it was some years ago and I had, we had our third kid. We had, it, no, five. We adopted our nephew, number five. We were just wondering how to make ends meet. Found out that it was like $45,000 that we were gonna be short for the whole month for my company. I had payroll to pay for everyone. We had to put everything on the line, my wife and I, to make sure that everyone on the team got paid before we did. Like everything on the line. I, ca I, 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 I came home, I came home and, and they didn't see it. I was positive, they didn't even know about it. And my wife and I were in tears every night. Like that, that's the difference. And then when they see you making more money later on, it's because you were the one that put everything, put your blood, sweat, and tears and everything you had into it. That, that's the difference right there. That's why it's your baby. Mm -hmm. And, and the key is communication. Like you don't have to, to guilt them, but help communicate with them when you can. You don't have to keep everything a secret. They'll respect you more if you communicate some of that stuff to them. Do you have an answer? Uh, no, I like the artist answer. I, I, mm -hmm. I always tell people I feel like that's what I am. Yeah, it's a right? canvas, I mean, right? We it's said a blank, so I'm an artist. It's a blank canvas, Everything right? I do, okay, whether I'm writing a book, like, exactly, okay. whatever I'm doing, yeah. whether I'm writing a book, or whether I'm putting new video series, or whether I'm yeah. trying to, you know, I'm, or I'm trying to help a client. It's like I'm painting something. Yeah. I want it to be beautiful. I want people to look at it. When, they're, when I'm done with it, I want them to look at it. Yes, exactly. And I want it to move them in their soul. And, and if it doesn't move yeah. them, then I'm not happy. I want to keep doing it. So anyways, I, well said, and it's all great answers. Want to rise above what holds you back? These are the stories of those fighting that battle. It might also be the story of you. I'm Dan Waldschmidt, author of Edgy Conversations and strategist of billion dollar companies all over the world. This is Mark Menard, author of The Story of You, the guy who knows a thing or two about never giving up. You're listening to Elevating Beyond. Let's get started. It's just what is your morning routine and what do you do, you know, to set your day? Uh, so I, I guess we go down, down the line. Four, five bills. Look, I think, did I hear, is that point number four or point number five? I don't know. You got, oh, you got oh, the whole, is, is it in here? So, yeah, yeah some of it's in there. Yeah. Uh, so, wow, I was gonna turn into a commercial. So. Morning to me, and I'm gonna tell you guys, I told you guys that to change, you really have to reprogram the subconscious. And the subconscious is really designed not to be reprogrammed. You realize we're designed not to change. It's the way we're wired. So to step outside and feel the fear and go, you need to set your day in the green zone. So if you get up in the morning, you're grabbing a cup of coffee, and you're hitting the news, and you're hitting traffic, I guarantee you're walking in the office in the red zone. So people ask me all the time, now I have a crazy routine. I don't recommend my routine, but I'm up at 2.30 in the morning. I'm in the gym by 3.30 in the morning. The reason I started that was it doesn't take time away from my family. I never miss a workout. Then I come in and then I really work on my meditations and things. So I usually have a kind of a law that I'll do more before 6 a.m. than most people will do all day long. And I believe the level of your personal development that you work on yourself is going to determine your success because the tribe doesn't want you. The culture doesn't want you to become an entrepreneur and be successful. So we're responsible for doing that. And once you, that becomes a routine and you do that morning routine, everything changes. Everything changes because you stepped outside. Now, super millennial, when he first started that, 
Uh, he lived with me, my son. This is my son. And, uh, come share yeah, share come up there. here for a second. And, uh, you know? what it was like. You, you so been, you what was that like to start like. getting up at, at 2.30 in the morning? Uh, <laughs> it, it was definitely young. interesting. Um, <laughs> usually I'm going to sleep at that time. And you learn that you're really wasting a lot of time. Like he said, by lunchtime, I've done what most people done, you know, in their entire day. And you really see, um, I'm not putting off dates with my girlfriend or going to family events and things like that. It's being able to build a business, do what you have to do, go to work and still have some type of a balance with your personal life. You're not sacrificing. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's, it's a big change early. He's starting out. And he's getting up at yeah, every day and he's building a business and working a job. Drop the mic, dude. Drop the, <laughs> the mic. mic drop. Because Super that's millennial. what it takes. Super millennial. That's Atta what boy. it takes. So okay, can I, let me share. Right. Let me share my morning routine with you guys, if you don't mind, because it, it, I give you like four practical things that I do every morning. First thing I do every morning, I wake up, and, and Matt knows that I'm very militarized in what I do. First thing I, if I really roll out of bed, I'll drink 40 ounces of water, roughly. Now, the first time you do that, you might think, "Oh my, I'm going to feel bloated." Oh, no. Absolutely. First time you might do it, you're going to feel a little weird. But right after that, what you know, your body has spent all night. That's why you get up in the middle of the night and pee, or you get up in the first thing in the morning you do. Your body's drained all that liquid you will feel yourself become hydrated. You'll literally and feel your yourself. Brain, your brain ex- has to have, I do the exactly. same thing. Exactly, you know that from running. That. When you run, if you get dehydrated even the slightest bit, one or two or three percent, at five percent dehydration, you'll, you'll, you'll start to die. So that lets you know, for those of, and by the way, diet soda and tea here in the South no. is not water. Is not water, real water. Real. So, so, so 40 ounces of water start. I then, um, I'll, or normally do some chores around the house. Why do we do chores around the house if I'm home? I'm trying to teach my kids I'm a team player. I'll empty the dishes and dishwasher. I might throw some laundry in the laundry, I stuff like that, that too, right? right? I'm yeah, showing them, I you're a man. This is not women's yes. work. This oh, is family crazy. work, a big deal for me. One. We don't label this women, this is family work. And I tell our kids, if you're in this family, yeah. we do this together. Yeah. If you don't want to be in this family, go do this on your own. But anyways, that's a side, side note. I, agree. I journal three things, three things every day. Um, three things I'm grateful for, two things that would make the day awesome, and then one thing, uh, I used to write one thing I could improve from yesterday. My therapist is like, dude, enough of this. Write down one thing you love about yourself. Mm-hmm. I started doing that. I meditate 15 minutes, by the way. I tried to get in transcendental meditation. It, for those of you who think that's scary, right on your phone, you can go to Omvana, you can go to brain app, dot, brain.fm. That's what I love, brain.fm. Uh, you got me to get that. Yeah, I love it. So you put an app in, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, put, put an app in your ear for 15 minutes and you will feel better. Uh, I also meditate in the middle of the day, but, but that's how I start. And then I'll, I'll ju- do some journal, uh, check my schedule. Sometimes I've got early morning calls to other countries and so on, other time zones. I'm kind of going through that whole thing. Um, and then, uh, you know, for me, I have some affirmations I go through. And I don't yeah. want to go through all of them. One of the most important ones that I do is I, and I guess they call these mi- mini meditations, maybe mini med- where I take like five seconds and think about something. Here's one of the main ones I think about as I start today. If I want something I have never had, I must do something I have never done before. If you want to lose weight, we talked about all things. You want to make money. You want to be a better leader. You, I can't do today what I did yesterday because I might have screwed it up yesterday. And I've screwed it up for all 37 years, 38 years of my life. So I have to do something different. I right. think about it. I just do, dwell on it for a couple seconds. The other thing I think about is just because I don't see progress doesn't mean it's not happening. Right. How many times you, 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 you diet January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, oh my gosh, nothing is happening. Yes, it is happening. But unfortunately, it's gonna take you 61, 62 days, yeah. and you would know more than before. I am, but, but before your body says, yeah. oh, oh, I'm actually gonna show you the results, right? And so people freak out and go, this isn't working, and yeah. they quit, and by February 2nd, all the treadmills are available. Yeah. But, but I'm gonna tell you, Dan, but, right? so also, yeah. the one of the things is, it's, there is really, I'm a scientist, by the way, and everything you're saying is true. Everything I do is science. When I went into medicine, I started researching why I was overweight. I want to understand metabolism owners. I'm a scientist. I understand meditation. I understand the nervous system. It's all science. Meditation is science. So one of the things is that morning routine is essential. I will never miss my morning routine. And David will tell you, it doesn't matter if I'm traveling. I travel a lot. I'm usually on the road about 100 days a year of traveling. But the other thing is the night routine. And one of the things that I always tell people, that first 10 minutes of your day, and the last 10 minutes of the day will set you for life. And one of the things I do, and I let, I'm a, <laughs> damn, we're so much alike. So 
The last 10 minutes, I set the five focus that I'm gonna focus on the next week. I got a big board in my office. I, I work from home, and there's the five things I'm gonna focus on yeah. not tomorrow. And the reason I do that before I go to bed is because if I sleep on that, answers come to me before I even start. But I also lay out my supplements for the day, I fill my water jug, I put out my workout clothes, I That's set, I man, I militarized yeah. because I was military, but I never go to bed without being set up for the next day. And that's one of the secrets of exercising in the morning is putting your crap out <laughs> when you go to bed at night. Because when you get up in the morning, if you're tired and you're trying to search for your clothes, I'm sorry, you just go back to bed. That's right. it's not gonna happen. That's why I was gonna, oh, I just Great. 10 seconds. I do a sim, I don't get up at two, but. <laughs> I don't I, recommend that, but, it's a unique, no, 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 it's a unique no. thing. <laughs> but you know what, it's, I can t I'm not like Eric Thomas, I love him so much, he spoke my company, he says I don't need no alarm clock to wake me Never. up. I do, actually. I don't. Never. I want to sleep in, but I, there's something sacred, and I have five kids, so there's different seasons about those early morning hours. And number one, like I don't, everyone I know, don't watch the news first thing Never. in the day. I don't even watch the news anymore. I, I don't know what the news is going um, on. I don't and, know what's okay, going on. Okay, so in the when world. I first wake up, I don't, I, I don't get on social media. <laughs> Um, that brain yeah. dot app or whatever, yeah. I'll, I'll listen to, it has like a little uh, meditation thing. Yeah, for me, points. for everyone that's yeah. like, I used to think meditation was so weird till I realized, and we all have ADD and I couldn't sit still. I started by doing it for two minutes and five minutes. That's now it. I can do 15. I realized it actually clears your, the, all the stuff that's blocking your head mm -hmm. and it allows you to be more creative. And then I go I like on a morning walk or a jog and when, to me, when I go on a jog, that's therapeutic for me. That's like, I believe in God. That's when I talk to God. That's when I can think through my day. That's when they're writing down what they're grateful for. That's when I'm looking at, I'm so grateful that I can run. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for these trees. I told Greg, I saw a white squirrel <laughs> as the sun was coming up. I'm grateful for this beautiful white squirrel. And it sets your rhythm and your tone for the whole day before I go to bed. I set everything out for when I'm going to jog. I used to sleep in my uh, weight vest, a 20-pound weight vest in my bed. So when I would wake up, I'd be ready to go. You say, I'm weird? Till my, <laughs> till my wife said, if, till my wife said, if you really? wear that damn thing in here one more time. Uh, how, did, how did your sex life go with that? I'm just curious. I mean, I don't hey. know. We don't want to talk about it on a family yeah. show, but I'm a little curious with a 20-pound vest. Not, not good. <laughs> So I don't, not good. I don't do this. So now I lay on the floor by the bed. I'm curious how that rolled. But like he was saying, get it, make it as easy as you can so that next day you can just get right into it. So the more excuses you won't have yeah. to avoid it. Ba boom. You're talking about meditation. Listen, I didn't know what meditation was. Only thing I knew, I could, I'd heard that ohm thing. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I can uh, do that. I could do that because I used to go through McDonald's. I sat there at the drive thru and they go, hmm. <laughs> I would just think what I wanted. Yeah, right. But now I do meditation. Yeah. People are afraid of it. Yeah. Meditation just means just sitting in a room being still. Getting and your mind off. Your You're not going to shut your mind off. You're, yeah. You don't shut it off. And you have to think. I, you know, when they were asked what's your morning routine, you have to. I learned this from uh, Wayne Dyer. And mm -hmm. he says every night he went to bed, he would always used to wake up stressed. So he put a little sign on his bed. And he looked at every day a happy thought and he'd say, tomorrow's going to be an amazing yeah. day. Because how many people go to bed with, uh, my child's sick, my mother's got cancer. You have to get that stuff out of your mind because you'll never, you'll never wake up if you keep thinking that stuff. So if you put someone in your bed, you know what? Today's going to be amazing. Today was a great day. You have to, I, I watched Looney Tunes. I watched the Three Stooges that night. My, Mark and I talked about the news. My morning routine is before my feet hit the floor, I will not leave the floor until I thank God for letting me open my eyes, yeah, that's right. for putting my two feet on the floor. So I do 10 things that I'm grateful for. When I sit in my big 12 men, women shower, whatever, I turn the water on and I just sit there and I think someone doesn't have clean running water in this world. Yeah. So I'm thankful. See, it's the little things that mean the most. Just to turn your tap on and have clean running water. There's people in Africa where, where Mark's wife's from, they have what's called parasites and they have, uh, they have tapeworms that you can pull out six feet out of your body. We Go don't to have Flint, to- Flint, Michigan. Yeah, Flint, Michigan. Good. Go to Pennsylvania where they're fracking it, they're fracking in Ohio yeah. and you turn the water on yeah. and you can light the water. Yeah. So just having water running yeah. clean, running water. You had, it's not the big things. People say, when I get the nice house or $100,000, yeah. 
No, it's the when, small things. In the future, it's, it's the small things. Like yeah. I said, go talk to someone who's who's dying of prostate cancer or ovarian cancer right now. I guarantee you it's not the house or the money. Yeah. It's I want to go to a birthday. I want to walk in the rain. Yeah. So be grateful for the small things. Mm -hmm. That's what matters totally in life. Nice. Yeah, and by the way, this whole discussion doesn't really matter. None of this, like, it's, like you may be listening going, dude, I want you to tell me how to be a millionaire. That's right. Right. Yeah. You. But so so yeah, this people we all argue. Have in common. Yeah. yeah. So, so like I, you all hear this before, but the, the behind the scenes, what you may not know is, you know, we get hired by NFL teams or NBA teams mm -hmm. to say, Dan, come help us. How do I help a guy who we're paying forty million dollars over two or three years? Mm -hmm. How do we help you? How do we help him be a high performer? It's the same advice for that high performer in the NBA yeah. or yeah. the NFL. You know, hey, so and so is 19 years old, 23 years old. We just signed him to a, you know, 120 million dollar contract. How do we keep him focused for five years? It's the same, same, same exact thing. If it helps, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo kick more goals than anyone else in in in, in, in the in a, in a Premier League, it, it'll work for you. So it, it's the small things, and it stop is. making excuses. You can do all of this stuff and. 10 minutes, 15 yeah. minutes, and you will, your life will change in ways that you'll, at first you're gonna go, well, that was lucky, and then you're gonna say, well, that was accidental, and you say, oh, that was coincidental, and you'll look back over a year and go, my relationships are better, my health is better, yeah. I'm actually got some money, I'm, I, because I'm not stressed out, I'm making better financial decisions, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm an evening person, not a morning person, That's and it. I finally woke up one day and said, dude, it's not the fact that you're not a morning person, you're not a motivated person. And I, I'm about as driven as anybody you'll ever meet in your life. And what I had to realize was why was I getting up in the morning? Because I have an obsession to grow and to be a better version of myself. And that's my motivation for getting my ass out of bed. Is if I don't, that might be the only window, that hour, that two hours at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. might be the only hour I get all day, right? <laughs> that, where yeah. I, exactly, where I can grow. And if I'm obsessed there about growing, that's I'm it. not going to let that's you steal it, it from me. It's right. the most peaceful yeah. type. People yeah. think I'm yeah. crazy, but I'm driving to the gym at, at three. <laughs> I'm driving to the gym at three thirty in the mo three o'clock in the morning. There's no traffic. Yeah. It's pe yeah, there's no traffic, right? It's peaceful. Yeah. My workouts are spiritual. I don't care what anybody says. That is my time that I get to do yeah. and take care of me. Yeah. Because after that, it's game on. Yeah. Boom. It's clicks on. Fast. We got people, I got clients all over the world. You like you, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. Boom. It clicks on. Yeah, there's really, there's really three things that motivate any of us, right? Money, sex, health. Those are, I mean, if you look at any advertising program or turn on the TV late at night if you have pay for cable. I don't, but if I'm in a hotel room, right? You'll, what are they selling? A workout machine, you know, something to do with love or Pretty sex loss. or money, right? Yeah. Those are three things. So think about how your morning routine helps you with those three areas. How do you feel more fulfilled and confident so you can get the love and relationships you want? What are you doing for your health? First thing in the morning, right? And then, and think about money. What are those quiet moments you're working on your business, working on your side hustle, so you can make money? And so the the, the answer to your, to your morning routine is: Look, you got to. I've I, at 38. I think I've tried 47 different things, and I'll continue to keep iterating the That's science right. model of it. What makes me yeah, better? I, I love yeah. the science. Right. I really and I study like the brain waves. Yeah. I sleep with a certain sure. binaural yeah. beat. I've been yeah. I've been using things when I sleep at night, yeah. Dan. When they still had boom boxes and cassette tapes. That's how long I, the, eventually the phone's the greatest thing ever happened to me. And yeah. now I can wear buds? You can wear Are you earbuds. kidding exactly. me? Yeah. It works. Even now, super it works millennial over here yeah, with the wireless works. buds. Because I, yeah, I yeah. don't want to waste but, any time in my life, and that includes when I sleep. Look at how you start, <laughs> being a millionaire, like you wrote about in your book, but, uh, is, is fantastic. It's a momentum play. One of the, mm -hmm. this may be a question someone asked later, the single greatest key performance indicator, KPI, that, that is not measured in big companies is momentum. Because it's something you yeah. feel. Momentum. It's, and it's something you feel. They want to know a sale. Sales happen later. Marketing, who knows if it works. Advertising, momentum. hopefully it works, right? But momentum. And so when you start at 2 a.m., your momentum, it like goes. by noon, boom! Yeah, I'm going. Your momentum yeah. is, like and, you, and, you and just people, feel I like, get, I can't and, stop now. I did I 10 things, I gotta do 10 more. Guys, I yeah. use meditation, right. I've been, but I've been doing this a long yeah. time. Yeah. I'm not gonna say that everybody yeah. can step out and do that. I've been doing this for 
for three decades. But, but you know? try one thing. But try, 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 yeah. try, try one thing. Try ten minutes. Yeah. In short, in short, yeah. what, we're, what, we're, in short yeah. what we're saying is yeah. nothing changes unless you change. Exactly. There you go. And, 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 there you go. Minutes, Set the intention to change, yeah. people. Next question. Yeah. 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 So, so the next question, we I'm pretty long, sure sorry. you guys just covered it. it. said, what's one of the daily habits uh, that you changed in your lifestyle? Uh, that was the most effective, and I think everyone yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, wake up earlier session. and get it done. Yeah, wake up, start. That's it. All right, so Christina asks, I know in order to be successful, there's always sacrifices. What's the hardest sacrifice you had to make? Um, how did this accelerate your success? And would you do it again mm. with the result that you got? I wow. would. I slept in my business four years, seven days a week, leaving an hour to go home and see my baby That's and sad. shower. Would I do it again? Absolutely. Uh, what, I, what I did was I paid my first business off in two and a half years instead of five, seven, or ten. And you have to make sacrifices now. It's easier now because back 30 years ago, we didn't have an iPhone. Now I could, I could see my newborn baby girl and we could FaceTime, yeah. right? I didn't have to miss an NBA playoff game because now I can watch it on my phone. But yeah. you, there's always going to be sacrifices. And, and Listen, every woman that's watching this in this audience now, they had to sacrifice when they had the child. It was painful. It was painful. I don't know if I can make it, right? But when they see that baby, there's the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And then you see that baby, that baby is your girl, your daughter, your business, whatever. There's always going to be a sacrifice. Anything that's easy will be hard. Anything hard will be easy. Yeah. I don't know that list any one particular sacrifice. Give me, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the model, the bed, it works the same. Yeah. Oh. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just say this, say this, to, to, it's a great question. It's someone great told question. me this, I didn't make this quote, but someone told me this quote, it's framed, it's, it's in my, burned into my brain, and it's simply this. Um, if you don't sacrifice for what you want, what you want becomes the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what we're talking about here is, it's not about if you sacrifice, you will sacrifice. It's what, what it is. Mm -hmm. It's either your dream, or your lifestyle. And once you understand, it's like what I said earlier about making money. Well, you, I can't save a hundred bucks a month. You can't, to become a millionaire, almost a guaranteed millionaire, you can't save $150 a month for five years. To become almost a guarantee, get, get out of but here. But you have a right? 55 inch flat screen TV. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and 300 buy. channels, yeah. right. 300 uh, channels. So, yeah. Right, I mean, so I, 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 I'm, I, everything they're saying is 100% true, and what Greg said is similar to my story too. Sacrificed, I had a job, I had a salary, teaching special ed, my wife got pregnant, we had two kids, it was the recession, started my own company, I just got accepted into this high-end school, I would have been making 65000 which would have been good. I had to turn the school down, I went all in on my company, and my office started in a barn, and uh, I didn't know how I was gonna make Your it. I was, I was working in uh, my brother's oh. barn at his campground, literally in a barn, running extension cords out. And not knowing how we were gonna make it, but I believed in it and I just kept going one day, one step at a time. Sacrificed hundreds and hundreds of hours a week, but I knew it was gonna be, not be forever. There's different seasons in your life. Like everyone says, grind, hustle, grind. And, and Greg says it too, but it, you, it sh you shouldn't be working 200 hours a week always and then let your family, but there's going to be seasons Season. when you do start something that I, like Greg said, you got to put hundreds of hours. It's like building that foundation of a tree to start something. You have to sacrifice. Every, I didn't watch TV. I love the Denver Broncos. I had to murder them. I stopped watching. I haven't watched football for oh, that, three there's, years. There's some things I will sacrifice. That's not one of them. I did. <laughs> I stopped and I, and I wasn't up on anything. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sacrificing that. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, it's weird because I never think of sacrifice that way. I never, I never felt like I sacrificed. The biggest thing I ever did, when I, in Miami, I opened up the very first ever personal training clinic. Nobody had ever done that before in the 80s. They thought, personal training, who's going to pay for you to count reps. Who knew? Um, I lived in my car for a year outside the gym. One year. Yeah, one more rep. Who's going to count that? But I figured it out. I put it in, in, a, in an executive building and this. And I lived in my, in my car for a year. And I had a routine. I mean, I would literally sleep in my car. Now, it wasn't good for dating. Dating was kind of weak then. But uh, I'm just saying, uh, I would go in. Yeah, I, I, I would go in. I mean, but I, I didn't, I, it didn't matter. I would take my clothes to like this place called 
called bird bath. Yeah. They would do all my clothes. I would get in the gym a half hour early. I would shower and do yeah. everything there. Yeah. I would finish probably 9, 30, 10 at night. I ate down in the restaurant below, egg whites and stuff. I was bodybuilding. I would go to my car and sleep and get back up and do it again because I couldn't get a loan. Nobody yeah. would give me a loan. Yeah. So that's the way I built the business. But I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't, I don't think sacrifice. I don't feel. I thought it was a venture. I know. To me, I always look at things. That was a venture so, so for yeah, me. Invest, you know. So no one invested in your, yeah. your startup, right? Yeah, they, they wouldn't. They I'm thought I was joking. crazy. And let me say one more thing. <laughs> Every one of us here, we have what's called a non-negotiable. Yeah. You have to have a non-negotiable in your life. With me, it's when my nieces are out of school. They're with their uncle G all the time. People see me on Facebook, Periscope, and they're like, dude, didn't you see like five movies today? Yeah. Yes, because the life I had, I, I made my daughter my priority. People say, how can you do that? It's easy. We lead our life. We design yeah. our life. Yeah. So my niece is out. We're bowling. We're skating. I leave a lot of money on the table because I want to have that family life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the, the, the friend I had who, who died with $57 million, his two kids were drug addicts, and he, would, he could not tell you the name of the school they went to. Yeah. Yeah. That's failure. Have a non-negotiable. Greg, you find that you hit your 50s is a little, I, I find now that I'm in my yeah. 50s that it's a little bit different because uh, peace is very important. It is, I wanna it be is. peaceful. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't need the big mansions anymore. I don't need, <laughs> I don't need these things. I want to build things that matter. Mm -hmm. I wanna change lives. And I want to have a blast doing it. That's it. I love this. And I want to teach young David. I want to teach him from the ground up. <laughs> this is how you build something. Right. And it's fun, but I, but it's different, right? I, I, I'm it's not grinding like these guys anymore no, because I don't need to. First yeah. of all, I don't have to. Yeah. I want to enjoy it a little bit. I'm the same way. You know, okay. my wife I was wondering because it, that it's changed seasons. when I hit 50. That's my wife and I's new thing now is traveling. Our traveling is the new. I'm downsizing. Oh, I beat because, you. I travel everywhere. Because when I look at my yeah, house, I I when I look at yeah. the house I grew up with 14 siblings was the size of my niece's loft in their bedroom, right? So we look and say, okay, our niece is gonna be out of school a couple of years. Why do we need this? That's, I, I, we, did this we just did the same Why thing. Why do we need we this? We just did it. We, we, you, yeah. can, you can, you can thing. live off less than what you have. Do you I need my home? <laughs> no. I love my movie theater. I have a drive-in outside, but do I need those? No. So our new thing is we're going to travel because at 50, it does change. That's what I do, man. We go does. to Amsterdam every year, 51. Europe every year. And I and now I don't watch yeah, the Packers no. on, on, yeah. on the big screen. I'm going to the games. I'm at the yes, playoff see? game sitting in Green That's Bay, right. second row. That's where I'm going. I want to enjoy. I want to go so, and travel. Yeah, so don't let people think, like Mark yeah. said, there are seasons where you got to work yeah. a lot. But those guys, and I know those people, who make millions of dollars and they haven't seen a movie or been to a football game in 15 I'm not, years. I'm not doing that. Now you, you do I, that. You do that I am because not doing that. life is made to live, not to plan to live. And I'm gonna build something. Let David work 90 hours. That's a week right. Now. Let young it's millennial. His, it's his You're season. Like Super That's millennial his season, his season, man. Not mine. <laughs> so there's levels. All right. Yeah. All right. So the next one, um, which is cool, because you all have a different point of view on this one, is. How has fitness and nutrition played a role in your success? Christina also asked that question. It made me a millionaire. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll answer from it went, got me, it saved my life when I was yeah. in jail after yeah. age 17 and what started changing my life from being in jail and selling drugs and doing them and the two roommates I live with are dead now is two things. I started reading, which I had never read a book till I was 18. And I started working out for the first time in my life, lifting weights, running, and that started changing literally. And I jog now six days a week. I never have stopped. That's become part of who I am. And it changed my life. Like exercise really changed my life. So, is it my turn? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. So for me, so I went from being the fattest kid in school, but I was always an athlete. Now, I want you guys to understand this. I always played sports and I just like food. I didn't like food. That's how I dealt with my abuse. I, dealt, I don't know how great you dealt with all that. Yeah. I dealt with food. That's how I dealt with it. So I went from there into bodybuilding. I was the most unhealthiest, not when I was 278 pounds, when I was bodybuilding. Because everything was to the extreme. I took it to the extreme. I know it's your book. I'm sorry. Hey, I took everything to the extreme. But I, I mean, it wasn't a healthy sport. You gain all this weight, big. 
We call it bulking. You didn't get fat. It was bulking up. And then you would cut down to 3% body fat. It wasn't normal. And so I remember when I walked away, I was probably 19, 90, 91. I had won seven titles. I was really good. Probably at the top of that class in the United States. And I looked in the mirror one day and I said, what the hell am I doing? I love working out, but I don't love this. Yeah. And I stopped the extreme. So for me, exercise now, that's where my life really changed was back in the 90s because I love working out. I can't imagine not doing it. It's just, it's, it's not something like, oh man, we got to go to the gym today? No, man, today we're training legs. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. Right. This, this guy runs. Oh, yeah. And I like to beat the, I beat the 20 year olds up. Like, you wouldn't believe it's fun. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention in this guy's intro, he runs like two yeah, mile no, no. marathons. Or no, are you guys or, ready for extreme? He runs like 75 Mr. Will, mile Schmidt. Ultra Tell him what exercise really so is. So you tell us. That's, that, that's well, insanity. Well, you, you asked a good question. Like, what, what is fitness or nutrition made for? I mean, look, the, 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 and maybe you just said it, but in your talk, I mean, the, the drug yeah. we all put in our bodies is food or Especially sugar, right? I mean, sugar. I mean, yeah. if you ever, if you ever, there's a book called The Case Against Sugar. Yeah. I mean, it'll blow it's your mind. Book. No, it's an incredible book. Uh, 10 times more addictive than cocaine. And, and by mm -hmm. the way, I'm a, I, I say this on the stage, don't I, Matt? You know, I love my jelly beans. In fact, I, I'll run a hundred mile race on <laughs> jelly beans and Coke. Right, I mean, I've done it before. I mean, that's how like Coca Cola. It, you know, Coca Cola, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, Coca Cola. Yeah, we're still running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still. We're I'm not, back. We're not so, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear, uh, good, good, yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, I think for for, for me, um, r running really allowed me. I don't want to be dramatic and say it saved my life or anything like that. I don't, I don't have any stories like that. Although I was emotionally unstable and and, and suicidal and, and things like that. I think for me, running for me is pure because you know, if you're playing basketball, you're like, well, we would have won, but that dude didn't pass me the ball. Or I, I, if I was playing football, it's like, ah, I would have scored the touchdown, but the stupid QB he underthrew me. But running, I mean. It's you. it's you. It's you, baby. It's the same with lifting. It's yeah, you. It's, it's you. So you're out there on yeah. a trail, and I don't want to be dramatic, but it's kind of spiritual. I mean, it is. No, it, to, no, it's to, to, run, to run a 100-mile race, or even a marathon, whatever, whatever your 5K, right? I mean, whatever your, your journey is, there's this process of it, like excitement. I'm going to do this to, like, what the hell did I do? <laughs> to, like, I don't think I'm going to make it. To, like, well, I'm almost there. Let me see if I can keep going. To... You know, I joke sometimes that the, I'll run a 24 mile race so that for four seconds I can do this as I cross the finish line. Isn't that ridiculous? For four seconds, I wanna raise my finger and say I'm a winner. But it's not the raising of the finger, it's the soul and the spirit that says I, right. I can do anything. Well, it's actually it's, science. Yeah. So you wanna so, talk science yeah, a little yeah. bit on that? So when we talk about the red zone, green zone, right? The stress response is never shutting off. In other words, that response is going off the moment you wake up and it is a hormonal response that affects every single thing in your body. The number one way, or the only way, forget that. And I'm talking science. I've looked at hundreds of thousands of labs and blood work and things. The only way to control it is through your diet. We lose weight when we stop trying to lose weight. You gotta repurpose the reason that you're eating. You're actually eating to manage this response. Now, how do you know when the response is managed? One, you have high energy. Two, you sleep very soundly. Three, you think very clearly because you're in a green zone. And four, you don't have cravings. How hard is it for me to go to a buffet and they can have all these foods and you don't want it? It doesn't take, everybody goes, Bill, you got willpower. No, I don't. I'm in the green zone. I don't want it. How hard is it for me to walk away? So. For those that are looking for the right exercise system, and that it's a system. You've got to live a system. So my system is comprised of six days a week I eat to manage the stress response. Seventh day is mine. Because, listen, you don't lose 100 pounds three times without having a little bit of eating problems going on, right? That's your cheat day. That's my cheat day. Today is my cheat day. You'll never see it. That's my girl. <laughs> You'll never see it, but it is my cheat day. And David will tell you, I'll eat whatever I want. It doesn't matter, I'll eat whatever I want. Tomorrow, it's back on regimen. Because you've got to understand, you're eating to manage stress, yeah. so you manage your nervous system, so you can step outside the cage and make money. That's what it is, it really is. I mean, think about how much, I mean, look, I don't want to be overly dramatic, but I, I feel like more, 
uh, uh, you know, more. And, and next, quick, we'll go to a question. I want the audience okay. to do yeah. a question yeah. next. The, the, if, after Greg goes. You know, the, 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 you know, the, the thing is, look, it sounds melodramatic. I'm not trying to be melodramatic, but there's a lot of people that you bump into on a daily basis that are either angry, really angry, just kind of masking it under this layer of like congeniality, right? And the other flip side is, is hurting. People struggling in marriage, mm -hmm. struggling financially, struggling physically. I mean, yeah. a lot of it's people. staggering. A lot of people. And, and we medicate ourselves, which I get. We do it. We, you know, alcohol, uh, you know, what, 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 there's a lot of ways we medicate, right? And the thing that, that exercise does for us is that it gives us, it, I, I joke sometimes in practice, you've, Matt's here, heard me, people say, man, you're so fast, how do you do this? And I'm like, I'm angry. And I'm somewhat joking, somewhat joking, but there's a little bit of truth to that is I channel my insecurity, I channel my rage that I couldn't close a deal two days ago, but I'm on this track and I'm gonna own it. For the next 45 minutes, I will, I will, I will, I will leave everything emotionally, physically on this track. And when I leave, it's like a spiritual event. I'm done, I'm exhausted. Right, I'm, I, I, I've left it here, and you know what's fine? I'm not going. I'm, I'm not. When I go home, when I'm driving home, I'm not flipping somebody off next to me. One, I'm too tired <laughs> and too cranky. I may be yelling at Matt to help me with too something. Tired to right? <laughs> exactly. I, 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 I'm not going home and yelling at my wife or my kids. Why? I purged that. I purged it. Oh, all the time. But, but I mean, on those days, on those days where I'm work, where I'm in that, where I'm why? Because I've I've, I've given it an outlet that that part of that stress. And so for, everyone's going to do something differently. I'm not trying to say you need to be a runner. Walking guys. I'm telling you, it's movement. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. It's walking. Yeah. I lot. I you know when you it's just walking. It's movement. You were saying that earlier. designed to move. Well, what do you do with your? What do you do with walking? In Columbus, Ohio, we have the biggest fitness Arnold Schwarzenegger class because that's where yeah, Arnold started Arnold, at. Yeah. And I heard him say, if you get up and you just move, he says, I was talking to uh, Mr. Millennial here, he says, you don't have to be Mr. Olympia. You don't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. You ride a bike, oh. you walk. So people see me on my Facebook Live and I'm on my treadmill at a 6% incline with my 50 pound weight vest. Now I like the weight vest, it just yeah. does something to me. You don't sleep with it, do you? No, no. no. Yeah, try that tonight. Yeah, yeah, no. Try, try that, try that. No, I like sleeping with the 110 pound <laughs> weight vest. But listen, I tell people, Les Brown always says, it's not what people's eating is killing them, it's what's eating at them yeah, that's, right. that's killing them. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you most of us have something yes. we run to food on and how, Listen, I'm 51, I've never touched drugs, alcohol, or anything, but my food is killing me. Yeah. People laugh, I say I'm, I'm a heroin addict, just like my brother yeah. says, they say oh, you're not. I get that. But because I'm a lifelong <laughs> diabetic and my family didn't take care of me with my insulin, I have half of a right foot. Three years ago, I almost lost my life and my leg. So every day I have to move like Arnold Schwarzenegger says. You don't have to do, me and we talked about this. If you're doing a bench press, you don't have 50, you, want, you don't have to use 65 pound dumbbells. No, it's a, that's what people understand. It's yeah. moving. Yeah, it's, it's just moving. Do it's yoga, movement. do so, do push-ups. If you, yeah. if you don't have a bench press, do push-ups on the sidewalk. But it's doing movement. something, but, but food is killing us. Sugar, yeah. sugar is just like the new heroin. It, it actually is. kicks the stress response off. So, in fact, the way my body processes sugar, if I eat an apple, I go into red zone. That's yeah. the way my body I works. Drink well, no, about sugar. but no, there's actually sugar different free. physiologies. Yeah, you're looking at another it. thing, you're looking at two different physiologies. So, after 30 years and thousands of people testing, there are really two physiologies. These two are one physiology. Their yeah. bodies will work differently. Greg and I are different. Like, I'm not running anywhere. Running for me actually stresses my body out that's and right. sticks me in the red zone. Running for these guys, that's what puts them in the green zone. So there's different physiologies in that. But Greg said it, I'm telling you guys, move. Just move, if you don't move now, move. That's all. Let's get a question before Super Millennial gets it from what, anyone in the audience. Any questions in the audience? Don't be afraid, you got it? That's all. Yeah. Why did you think the mic would work? No one told me. <laughs> I held it because, too. Because um, we, Wait Mark tried. Mark tried. Be because Mark four of us have ADD yeah, we and just go we off. all constantly interrupt each other, so it's the best way that we can do it. That's pretty much We're trying. Let me, let, let me ask you a question. Okay. 
what's uh, what's the, what's the one thing that keeps you up at night? Um, Let me ask each of you. And thinking you about them. these two. And how, who are they in relation to you? Little sister, mother. That keeps you up at night. And let's me ask you why? 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 I worry. I why? Worry constantly. Her health. Her age. <laughs> and do you know that? And uh, my father all the time. Like, you know, worry's a fear energy. I'm going to tell you right. something. Um, I know. I energy know. works like this. What you hold in that cage, right? It's called the law of mind. What you hold in that cage, what you think, you create. What you hold in that cage, what you feel, you attract. And what you hold in that cage, right? What, what, what you imagine, you become. So if you're gonna hold worry and fear in that cage, you're actually metaphysically drawing that in. That's why if we're angry, do you ever notice if you're angry and you start the day angry, everybody else around you becomes angry and you attract more angry things in? Because that's the way we're wired. So you must step outside there and it's another energy stepping outside, it's courage. And you need to know that they're taken care of. Because you're not doing anything for yourself because you're putting yourself in this very low zone energy. Does that make sense? Yeah. I hope I didn't go too deep over everybody's head because sometimes that happens with Greg, me. Well, <laughs> Greg has something, <laughs> that's but I'll what follow happens, it up. So that's what happens. You have what I would say is the woman who worries died. The woman who didn't worry died. And instead of worrying about your mom's health, Think of ways that you can help your mom's health. Mom, can we go for a walk in an air-conditioned place? Instead of worrying with your dad or your sister, how can I help the situation? Right. We, we were, it was storming the other day, right? right? We could worry or we could say we're running like Dan to go to the inside. Stop worrying and figure out how to, anything in life, if you can find a solution to it, you won't worry about it. Ask yourself, how can I help my family? Can Don't I worry. tell you something too? Worrying and being up all night is not going to help them. It's only, the only way you can truly help them is to let that go and become the best version of yourself, as hard as that is. I know I was worrying like when my sister left my company and she went to Ethiopia and she's running an orphanage and she's not getting money and I'm worried, oh my gosh, I'm making more money, I'm feeling this false guilt. And then I wrote my book and I'm thinking, what if it's taking all the attention for it and it wasn't helping anyone then it started inspiring her. At first I was getting a lot of pushback from them and resistance. Then it inspired her to want to write a book by seeing how I continue to become a better version of myself. I got an echo, man. Okay, whoops, I guess I'm, I'm in our live version here. So maybe, <laughs> c c do, you, do you mind if I could, what's, what's, what keeps you up at night, if you don't mind me, me asking? Um, Does anything? Yeah. I'm very scattered. Yeah. And I have a lot of interests, a lot of creative things I want to do, but I don't seem to get all the way to the end of one before I something sparkly and I go after that yeah. and I never quite circle around to finishing things. Yeah. <coughs> That's what keeps me up. You you and me too, girl. You and me too. Yeah. <laughs> Squirrel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm right now, I'm like, what what? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. What, 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 what keeps you up at night? Well, I think for me, especially lately, my yeah. husband's getting ready to retire from the military. Yeah. We've got this one to put through college. She only wants to go to MIT. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, That's exciting. It, it, um, for our business, yeah. I'm constantly trying to think of ways that I can make it better, faster. I'm a solopreneur. Mm -hmm because he is still working, he doesn't, he's not able to put time into the business as much. So I'm constantly trying to figure out ways I can get my clients in, keep things going, survive on two or three hours of sleep a night, you know, all of the So you got a lot on your mind. Yeah, it's like yeah. the weight of the world because yeah. I, I can't shut down because there's too many things spinning. So I'd love to, I'd love to talk to you in like 30 days if you did what Bill was saying in the morning where you had you time. Yeah. Just you time. And you just early, but I go right to work. Yeah. yeah you, you, you just and, and then personal and then development. I, I you you just took a couple minutes even in the middle of the day to uh, 
whatever you want to call it, time for you, meditate, mm -hmm. I guess yeah. is the word I'm going to use, with, with, with an app or something for 15, 15 minutes where you literally just sit, you do that for 30 days. Don't change your diet, don't even change, just sit for 15 minutes and then come back and I would love to chat with you in 30 days and you, I yeah. bet you would be, you would, it would be radiant. Yeah. How, the, the, the worry, I can see it in your face yeah. too, all yeah. the different things you're thinking, what about this and what about this and what about mm -hmm. this? And then you realize I'm enough. I'm gonna figure it out. That's right. Yeah. Be awesome. That's right. What about you? What's happening? MIT. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's, she's trying to figure it out. Yeah. She's gonna figure it out. Yeah. Thoughts and being curious. Okay. Like overthinking. That's awesome. Well, also that. And <laughs> what about all the chips in the bed? And I'm <laughs> sitting on my hand. Losing. Like what? Uh, like like thoughts? Like overthinking and worrying or? Not really that. I don't really got much to worry about. I'm really young. It's just I constantly think about this thing, yeah. that thing, and that thing, and this thing. What about Isn't this? That, awesome. about that? It is awesome. Like, that, it's the most random thing awesome. ever. Okay. See, and this is this is the this is this is mom. This is you. This yeah. is you, girl. Yeah. This is. She's, she's my mini. Do you know what's awesome? Was, this is possible yeah. for you too. It's possible for all of us. Yeah. I'm working on. It. I'm, I'm at 38. I've got another decade before I, I reach some of uh, my, my my friends here who who have more experience than I do. And I'm I, I'm eager to grow and evolve and become that guy. But this is what's possible. I see people who just it just goes through them. It's almost like they're 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 a screen door instead of the door. And I'm the door, and I'm trying to like stand up against everything. And these guys are screen doors, and they're just letting it go through them. But I, but I see this is what's amazing. Well, see, no fear, nothing. Start her own business. Yeah. And Do it. Pay for her college, and yeah. I sometimes feel like maybe I put a little bit of my too many things on the plate. Her, but it's crazy. Oh. But here's what's funny. Yeah. She doesn't even feel like she. She doesn't even feel like she has those. Look, we've got She's the dozens. One of the family. Yeah. We, we, no, we, we've got we've got dozens of questions, right, from people asking these questions, and it sounds like you're not even encumbered. You're like, I'm going to MIT. Yeah. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna a, start a business. I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna. This. You know, but, can I? It's a perfect example. Perfect example. Dan. Yeah. What? Can I talk for a second? Oh yeah, sure. It's your, <laughs> your show. <laughs> this is your event. I mean, it's my ADD. I forgot what I was gonna say. Yeah. So something that is is tough is as a parent, we have to realize our responsibility. We want to help our kids. We want to do everything for them. But our responsibility isn't that to raise them to be good kids, but to raise them to become good men or women of character. And sometimes it's just like with the monkeys and delegating. You've got to let go. And, and watch from a distance and let them really grow through See, it. I'm experiencing that with my older one back here. You know, she's 21, so I see her making uh, young decisions, and so it's hard as I like mom. that adjective. Yes. I love that, I love that adjective. <laughs> that's a no, choice, that, that's a smart that's mom right, right there. I'm not <laughs> saying to completely no. get out, but also, smart mom. you gotta give the, and also what helped me, when I went through all that, I would overthink. All of us here had what they would have called ADHD. You and I are 38, they diagnosed me with that. Every smart person is, every entrepreneur, like we said, is a little insane. You have to be to create something like this event that has never been done before. It's insanity to say that we could all be doing this. But it's, you're, you're overthinking what you think is, that's also what is gonna make you think differently than everyone else. And I used to be like you, I'd be up all night, I'd think what's wrong with me? I used to overthink everything that I said to everyone. And I would overthink every conversation and I observed things differently. And Greg, you and I were talking about it. Now we observe, thing dif observe things differently and that's what makes us successful. Like I'll go to events and I'll study, I wonder how they hired those speakers. Ooh, they have, they catered food there. I wonder how much, and I'm thinking from the, ooh, they got that lighting. I wonder what that costs. And I'm looking at like from the 360 standpoint of how they run the whole business. And like I'm always observing and studying and that's our ADD used like as a weapon. So that's a blessing. I was curious about the That's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. I'm gonna tell you something that I don't know if you want this advice or not. But I'm gonna be honest with you, okay? Now, I have five kids. I raised a lot of kids. So they're all growing up and uh, but I'm going to tell you something. If you want your kids to be successful, it's all about you. You need to learn to become a little bit selfish. 
And when you hear that word right away, you think, oh, I can't be selfish. And that's that's it. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you something. And that's why you're up at night. That's why you're stressed out. And that's why you're in anxiety. You have to be selfish. Nobody's more important than you. Not your children. Nobody. When you can do that and take care of yourself that way, you're not going to be up all night. And as you grow, they grow. That's right. That's how they grow. They don't grow by you holding her back. Mm -hmm. This one's got, this one's a tiger. You can see yeah. it. I've been around a long time. You have to be selfish. Yeah. You have to take care of you. Nobody's more important. That time in the morning is your time. Nobody's more important. Not your client, not your husband, not your kids, not maybe your dog. But not, <laughs> but, you know, my dog might be more important. Yeah, that might be. But my son will tell you. You. There's nobody more important than yeah. me. Because you know what my greatest legacy is? My greatest legacy is I broke the string of abuse. Amen. My family, my kids have yeah. never experienced abuse. And they're all becoming successful. Nobody in my family did that. I walked away from my family to be able to accomplish that. Because I knew when I had my oldest daughter, I couldn't help them. I was selfish. Yeah. I was selfish. You gotta be selfish. Yeah. And you told me you drove all the way here today, and that was... That's amazing. Is it okay if yeah. I share that? Yeah. What you told yeah. me? That's okay. Because yeah. you were struggling with anxiety and stuff so bad, you said you hadn't even left and driven Maybe on your own. minutes away from my house. Yeah. And you drove from another it's state time. to come to this it's event. It's your time. And your daughters are both watching that. It's your time. And actually, time. I want to give you a round of applause for doing yeah. that and coming here. That's yeah. right. That's stepping out of the cage. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. you can do you, this. You, yeah, it's it, it, two, two things I would say. One one is, you know, in our, when we're when we're playing battle, we shoot the general. And the army doesn't know what to do. And you're the general. Yeah. And so we have to keep you safe, right? Because you're the most important person. I say I think this is a mom thing. Yeah. My wife does this and I see this with a lot of even female leaders at high yeah. executive levels. Okay. They want everyone else to be successful and that's a magical quality. It's so magical. But there's a certain point where you have to say the better you is a better everyone. And a better you, it's not just one, it, you're, you're multiplying. And so, it's your tribe. that's and, awesome. And that, you know, I, I tend to do that with my team too. Yeah. I put sometimes a lot more effort into what they have going on than my own stuff. So I'm learning yeah. to step yeah, back. You let them do and, things yeah. you wouldn't allow yourself to do. Isn't that funny? You'll allow, you'll give, the, you'll, they'll do something and you'll be like, that's and okay. That stops but you won't do that to yeah, yourself. Stop. That yeah. stops right yeah. now. That's yeah. why you drove here. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. You set that intention. It's never going to be again. Yeah. And I guarantee you, in 30 days, 30 you'll days, see a yeah. shift. I promise you. Yeah. In 30 days, you'll see a shift. Yeah. Second thing I'll say is this I, someone, someone told me this, you know, water cuts through stone. Yeah. Not because of its power, but because of its persistence. You don't teach water to flow. Mm -hmm. It flows. And so in our lives, I've, when I find that I'm running up against an obstacle, it's because I'm usually not flowing. I've got a, a, something financially, physically, mentally out of whack. And so to flow, and this seems crazy, but for you, you're flowing. You're, you, you're flowing. You're MIT. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Listen, you should be just as flowing as your daughter. There's no reason. Yes, you have bigger budgets and employees and all this kind of stuff, stuff that you feel like is stopping you from flowing, but you're, you're just <laughs> as powerful as she is. You have just yes. as much opportunity and you have more experience. And so that's, that's, that's the part. And it sounds foo-foo when you give someone advice to say flow. It sounds almost like you're a Bruce Lee sort of, you know, yeah. just flow. I mean, that is but, Bruce Lee, by the way. Yeah, it is. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but that's it. But yeah. Flow, flow. flow is when things come natural to you. Yeah. You're, you. What you're doing is, when I talk about energies, you're trying to force your life. And there's these lower energies, and that's a force. You're trying to force things to work. I've got to get this to work. And what happens is force brings in more force. When you let go and you start taking care of yourself and you start working from a different energy and just kind of let it, let it all come. And what Dan told you is absolutely right. There, I will get up and I have that morning routine. At noon I stop and have a routine. Yeah. Before I go to bed, I have a routine. You've got to break yourself. <laughs> I'm going to put that mic. Uh, I got it. Give me the mic, all right? So you've got, so you've got to just let it, let it go. Yes. Let it go. But try one thing, seriously, because we're one giving thing. you 20 things. Yeah, one. Do one thing. Just try one thing. I just say, Wendy, you're a woman. You're a mother. Yeah. You're not the only one. I'm sure the woman behind you oh, yeah. is the same way. But you, you, you're on an airplane, right? We, we flew, Mark and I flew in. What, how, what did they tell you? Oxygen mask come down. Don't put it on your yeah. baby. 
put it on you first. Because if, you, if you're struggling with her and she's fighting, you're both dying. Save yourself. It's not, being selfish is not being selfish. Yeah. It's, it really, Oprah Winfrey talked about that. Yeah. You have to take time because mothers and women, they're managers, they're psychologists, they're preachers, they're everything. They're business owners. Yes. So you have to say, like she wants to go to, M she wants to, go to MIT. You know what? We talked about this yesterday because you know my wife. And we say, you know, you might have tough love. You might have to say, hey, you go to MIT, you got to raise the money. We don't have the money. Yeah, we don't have the money right. There, there, there's, tough, there's tough love. But you got to say, you know, because if, if I say this, when I spoke to BPW, Business Professional Women, I hit all 449. I didn't hit the, the, the 450 because she was 21 years old. I said, how many women here have put their dreams on hold because of a man or a child? Mm. Everyone, right? Except for that one, yeah, because yeah. she was 21. She hasn't lived through anything yet. So you, can't do that. you have to say, like yeah. Bill said, this is my time. This is your time, baby. You got to rock it. You, that, that, that's why a lot of women do wake up early. Yeah. They say, because I have the time. The kids aren't up yet at 6 o'clock to go to school. Yeah. I, that I, is when I'm the most productive. I get the most Yeah, it's done. your time. Well, you know, working in corporations, when I, when I speak in corporations, the high executive women all live in guilt. Here they, they work, they climb the ladder, and they live in guilt. Why? Because they're away from their family. Yeah. So it's like you have to understand that you have to take care of you because, listen, they're, they're, you're done. You did a great job. It's their time now. It's their time. Let them fall down. I let David fall down on his butt. I'm giving you the mic right now. It's the air mic. It's the air mic. Yeah. Why do I do that? No, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. This, you got this. this step of coming here. Because it's yeah. not easy putting yourself on that hot. This is in the mastermind. We call this a hot seat. Oh, yeah. It's warm, isn't it? I'm in the. Hot seat. I'm in the hot seat. And I didn't know that she drove to yeah. uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. I didn't know she. This is awesome. Don't like to get yeah. out. I didn't know yeah. that. that's awesome. I she was just it. driving. Almost hit a couple of trucks head on. But that's <laughs> so where are we going? Question. We can go to the next one. I still well, have some rapid fire after. But. All right. Um, what was it like getting into the writing business? Writing? Writing business. Go ahead, Books, the mic authors. Or, don't do it unless you feel, don't. No, there's no saying. Who's I, got the mic? Someone has the, the mic. mic. Someone facetiously. As I would say, look, it, it, only what write a book right? unless you you feel so passionate about it, you can't not write a book. That's yeah, right. You don't write a book to sell books. I hear, yeah, I hear people say, yeah, I, I want write to write a book so I can books. be credible. Be incredible, incredible, and then write a book. That's right. And I think that's why the quality of books is yeah. Can I rattle your cage if I go first? Of course. Am I going to take you out of the green zone? Not Do it. Right. I'm good. <laughs> so Dan and I just talked about this. People write us all the time about, I want to be a speaker. Do I need to write a book to be a speaker? And our answer is maybe, but no. Don't do it if you're only doing it to be a speaker. Just like they said, I spent years, I lived something that I had to write about. I needed to share it. I wanted to help people through writing my book. It's a hard process. It's a lot, one thing to start a book, it's another thing to finish it. This one is from Christina. It says, struggle is what creates drive and success. My kids will never struggle like I did as a kid, but I still want them to have drive and passion. Thoughts on this? Now, I'd say right from the beginning, man, I've had a great childhood, teenagers, and now. You want me to answer that, Super Bowl? Go ahead. You want me to answer that question? You don't want me to answer that question, Go, go, go. Do you want me to answer You don't want me to answer that. I'm ready. <laughs> so the question is, right, they, they, their kids don't struggle. They won't struggle the way that right? they did. Yeah. And so what are they worried about? They won't be successful? They won't you know, have the, the Here's my back. thing for kids. You guys are going to hate me, but I'm done with it. Like it. You know what it is? Make them struggle. I agree. I make, do I make you struggle? Yeah. Do I make you struggle? Sure. Tell them honestly. Yeah, I would say, I like, push growing you. up as a kid, I've had everything I ever wanted. Uh -huh. yep. Teenager. Great. When you went into business, perfect. what when happened? I started working with Bill. I thought it was just going to be, this guy has 30 years of doing this. Grab the coattail and keep going. No. And no, it, he cut the coattail off and said, here, fall on your face. Fall on your ass. Yeah. Get up and keep on I going. I did it with every one of my kids. They're all successful in yeah. business. One became a teacher, didn't want to do business. The other one too in business. But I make a struggle. I create a struggle for them. I want you, I, like my daughter, you better, I'll give you the money. You better go to the banks and do this. Yeah. With him, yeah. you better and, be up in the morning uh, ready to go. There, there's a billion dollar <laughs> yeah. company, Greg yeah. and I were just talking about, it's a giant basket. Yeah. 
that Long went bankrupt. Road. And what happened was this guy built this legacy. He was the one that said, well, what was the famous saying that he said? It's we the, are in the people business. It's Dave yeah. Longenberger. They're, Dave they're Longenberger. Like the Ro so Rolex of baskets. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what happened was he didn't teach his... He gave his kids everything That's except what it took yeah. him to become successful, which is, and yes, you want to give them more. I give my kids more. But also, if you don't teach them some of the struggle of what it took to get you successful, then they're not, when you're gone, guess story. what happened? The company went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So you're actually giving your kids more of a struggle by not giving them a struggle, and it's actually enabling them. So you gotta let I, I your kids grow. I have a slightly different twist on this, no, which, you is, can't, you can't talk. which is, and Wendy, I think this is the power of what you were just saying earlier. You know, I, I was really lucky. I was raised by a dad and, and grandfather who were inspiring as like the most inspiring people I'll ever meet. My well, story of George in my book is the story awesome. of my grandfather. Awesome story. You find that out at the very end. Yeah. The guy pulled himself from the uh, ditches of World War II story. to become a millionaire. You just you you weep because and, and and what I I remember one of the most memorable stories of my father as I think about what my, you know, all the things he taught me, it wasn't what he did. It was one winter day, my father was the deputy director of the National Security Agency when Condoleezza Rice was the person. He reported right to her, was top dog at the NSA. And my dad got in his little blue, blue truck and drove, took him five hours to get to Fort Meade, which is where the NSA is headquartered. He did something to go do some small thing there, turned around and drove five hours back home in the snow. And here's what that taught me. I had a snow day. I was, ha I was tickled pink. My father got in his truck and drove five hours for a 15 minute transaction. And he didn't have to tell me uh, much from that. What I learned was as dad, this is a guy who said, you do whatever it takes to be successful. He triumphed. I don't even, I, I wrote the story. He's like, I don't even remember that. But that even makes it more cool because it was just for him like another day. That's what he did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I, 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 I tell this to my wife and I, I was like, how can I empower my wife so she can be an amazing, more amazing her mom? How can she help me? How can I communicate clearly so I can be a better dad and not yell and scream when I get home because stuff's on the floor, right? And so how can, I, how can we show triumph? So that my kids don't have to struggle the dumb way that I've struggled because I was an idiot with my that's marriage. I was an idiot. I, don't, I want them to learn other things, stuff. Right? Yeah. So exactly. that, that's it. That's slightly that's different it. twist to say. I think with you triumphing, man, everybody around you just like, it, 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 it makes it amazing. Yeah, next so. question. Next question. All right. Um, I just started a network marketing company, which I'm sold on the products as they healed my health issues. As a new entrepreneur, any words of wisdom? I'm guessing they're asking for your internet marketing or just an Listen, entrepreneur in general? Uh, uh, yeah, give him the, go stop, ahead, stop, you can start. Stop, stop, stop going to be. So stop lying. I did, listen, I don't want to say a curse word, but Dan, will you say the BS, stop the BS, say it how you would yeah, say Yeah, stop it. the bull There you go, thank you. See, yeah, he's- Dan for us, Listen, <laughs> be, be, because when people tell me, and me and, and Bill was talking about this, when people yeah. tell me as a, as a lifelong diet, there's no cure for type one diabetes. Yeah. When someone calls me with their B- Yeah, yeah, bull uh, MLM marketing, yeah. that they have something that yeah. can cure yeah. my type one diabetes, that can cure prostate cancer yeah. and they have the literature with the with the doctor from yeah. Sweden or Bucharest or whoever and they show up stop the damn line stop telling your friends I had a close friend who says Greg can you come look at my business and give me some advice on it I get there and all she want to do is recruit me yeah 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 stop doing yeah, that yeah. stuff be yeah. honest yeah stop showing the face yeah. of do your due diligence mm -hmm. make sure what you're talking about because in the end when you get in trouble that multi-level marketing company, network company, they're not going to come protect you. You're on the hot seat. Yeah. There's no magic pill, people. No. That's right. I, no. If I had the magic pill, I could gain my weight back in 30 days. I've had it off for 35 years. If I had the magic pill, I'd take the magic pill and go eat the pizza. I'm not an idiot. Yeah. That's right. You know, I mean, <laughs> there's no magic. Yeah. Anybody else say anything about that? Yeah. yeah don't over-promise and under-deliver. Find out what it really does, how it helps people. Be real and honest with them. If you really believe in it, then sell it to them like it is your own business. And if you don't yes, believe you in it and you think it's bull crap, that's what the problem we talked about with a lot of the MLM is, is they're not taught how you have to really make it like it's your own business. There's a lot of good MLM products that we're yeah. marketing. Yeah, yeah. But when you start telling people, 
That yeah. you, if you take this oregano and stick it up your butt and pull it out your nose. Yeah. Yeah. It gets crazy. It's, Look, yeah. I, I love that the actually model. works. Right? I, don't, I don't hate yeah. the business model. I just think that when people get into MLMs, they think it's easy. It's yeah. a business. Yes, they do. Yeah. It's a business. They got to, yeah, got, it's a business, easy, right? Yeah. And so no business is going to give you all that money in six weeks. Yeah. And no yeah. business is going to tell you to go to your friends and family and and bring them into the yeah. into well. This thing. It, do, it does yeah. to the guy who has yeah. the, the guy who has the uh, Lamborghini with all the women and, yeah. and, and, and bikinis yeah. and high heels shooting yeah. basketballs. Yeah, yeah. 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 because they worked at McDonald's six months before, yeah. Yeah. and now they live in a twenty thousand square feet and, house and by selling lies. this. On, Guys, on Instagram, the, right? it, the, it's a great model for people that want to get into business because you don't have to pay to start up the business. Yeah, it's, it's a great a model. In a box. It's a, it's the excellent business in a box. But it's a business, and one of the yeah. things they don't teach well in network marketing, I know a lot about it, I've researched a lot on it, is they don't teach them how to be entrepreneurs. They don't teach That's them how right. to be business That's people. Right. They don't even te teach them how to do their yeah. taxes. Yeah. How do you do this? That's do you right. incorporate? Do you do, they don't, don't teach do you nothing. Just they just want, they yeah. give you a product well, they you say is magical, and, they over and this is gonna yeah. grow hair, because it didn't work, I tried that's it. Right. It, does you know, I, it didn't hair. grow hair, and, and that's, what, that's my take. The same lesson, I mean, the beautiful thing about multi-level marketing is, you, you know, someone someone else took the time to to do some do marketing all the brochure, work for do all, you. yeah, and hand you this thing yeah. and say, you know, you could, something to sell. But just like you're selling dog grooming, just like you were selling, you know, anything else, you know, you 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 can't say, you know, we're going to grow puppies. You say we're, we're going to shampoo and, and groom your and groom your dog. And someone goes, oh, well, I want. I happen to have a dog. Can you can you shampoo and groom my dog? And so we, we've become very passionate about this. We're, you know, I'm just I'm, no, I'm just saying, like, you know, when when you know the reality is we become passionate because we're actually putting together some programs, some of the billion dollar strategies that we can deliver for people in multi-level marketing. Because I used to shoo these people away and say, get out, just get away from me. Because I'd get the call, hey, you have 300,000 people on Twitter or something, come sell my crap. And I would just be like, the same thing, bull I, 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 no, I'm not going to do that. Why would I hit a button on Twitter and help make you money? Like that's you know, that, that that's the easy button, and life's not easy. Right. Yeah. But what I've realized is, and I've even got it you know tattooed on my arm. Believe here is that these are these are these are actually I, I've changed my tone of voice a little I, I bit. A, these I, are believers. Yeah. So these are people who yeah. said out of the millions and billions of people, and you know some people that you know are just complete assholes. But these are people who aren't. These are people who said, I want more for myself. Sure. I'm admitting I, it, and I I'm taking the first coach, step. I actually coach a couple herbal yeah. people, and that's a big multi-level yeah. marketing. And they're self-made millionaires. Yeah. yeah. But they work for six years, and yes. they did this, and they did they, this. They, they, and they think and they behave and they make differently. millions of dollars yeah. doing that, you yeah. know? Sure, you can Let mark. me sum it up. You just took Every, the mic out of my hand. Yeah, like <laughs> Kanye West style. Let me sum it up. Everything we've said tonight about what you need to do to be successful, do that. That's what it takes. <laughs> That's yeah. a good way to say it. <laughs> right. um, no. Bill, one came in on Facebook Live that says, have you ever known anybody able to get off thyroid medication for hyperthyroidism? For hyper or hypo? Hyper. Now I have to okay. reach out and give you the mic. Hyper, hyperthyroid's a little bit different than hypo. Hypo is a slow metabolism. Hyper is when it's sped up. Now. What happens is when you have hyper, it can cause cardiac problems. So, no, I, I, you know, it's you actually have to go on blood pressure medications. On it. So it's a little bit different with hyper um, because it's making everything work fast. It's working everything fast. It's Graves' disease. So what has to happen is they have to fix that. And can they get off medication? Usually not. Let me be honest with you because what will happen is they'll go from speeding to slow. Now. We are not giving medical advice on this show. But I will tell you, never say never, because you don't know. But you have to have a good doctor that's really working proactively with you, because it's going to go from hyper to hypo when they fix it. And there's different ways of fixing it. I, I could do a whole show on thyroid. So that's, that's not. But that, to answer your question, usually not. But guess what? I'm on thyroid. Nobody dies from thyroid. I'm going to tell you guys right now, it's one of the greatest things. If your thyroid is not operating at optimal level, then your metabolism can't operate at, meta at, at optimal level, and that's energy. So nobody dies from thyroid. I, I think thyroid, if your thyroid is slow or sluggish, in our medical clinics, we actually treat it if it's a little bit under, and because that way we know that you increase your health. Does that make sense? Did I answer the question? I hope I answered the question. And this will be one of the last ones that we got from the list that we got, and it's a pretty good one to end on. Um, it was directed towards Mark, but I kind of want all of you guys to chime in. It's basically, if you were to die today, 
What's one piece of advice you give to your children? What's one thing to leave with them? Live life now. You're not Mark. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was, that was a good answer, though. Uh, yeah, I... Follow, follow your heart. Screw the experts. And do what God puts in your heart. Don't do what I tell you to do. Don't do what everyone else morally, ethically, just be the best of you and, and follow your heart. That's it. He said we're trying to go. Yeah, I, I would, I, I mean, I think that's why I have the word believe tattooed on my arm um, is that someone asked me that a long time ago. It was slightly different. What's one piece of advice you give to a 20-something year old? Mm -hmm. I said believe because yep. there are people who will always tell you that's never going to work. The greatest inventions of the that's world right. all had somebody tell them that will never work. Uh, right. Everything in my whole life yeah. they keep telling me it Listen, can't be done. So, we, we, we now pay for water. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So that's why I say believe because, yeah, you know, know. Belief, belief does some crazy stuff. It will, people halfway across the world will we'll, we'll, we'll wake up in the morning and say, my job for today is to blow myself up in the name of what I believe. Right. And yet but we're answering questions from people who once we finish, will make 20 excuses why what we just said doesn't apply to them. Let me say about beliefs. Beliefs are what separate a Mother Teresa from a Charles Manson. Yeah. So, but so just believe, believe in yourself. Yeah. Believe. Believe. So what is this, That's it. piece of advice to the child? Maybe. Son, you're driving tomorrow. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying, right? So, no, mine is, you no, know, it, it, it really is, and my kids are like that, follow, follow your passion. I was just and you know what we got to do? Yeah. You and me? Get the hell out of their way. Yeah. We, we, I, I, I let him That's fall true. on his face. I let my daughter, my daughter's an amazing businesswoman. <laughs> She'll be a millionaire before she's 30. I actually wrote a business plan. I gave it, it's one of my blogs. I gave it the great for my 15 year old son. So we're going down the street. I have five hours with him in the car, so he's trapped. And he says, You know, Dad, I really, he's really good at football. He goes, But I'm not stupid. I don't think I'm going to go to the NFL. I might. I'm going to try. But I have to start thinking what I want to do with my life. He's 15. He's going to be a sophomore. And I said, well, What do you love to do? He goes, I love to work out and I love to be around sports. I go, Then become an athletic trainer. And the first words that came out of his mouth was, they don't make any money. And I said, okay, what do you want to do then? He goes, I'll become a doctor. I go, do you love medicine? No. See, that's how we program. We're programmed that, I, you know how many doctors I work with? I've been working with doctors for 30 yeah. years. Most of my coaching clients are doctors that want to rebrand themselves because they hate being doctors. Yeah. They became doctors to make money. So I laid a business plan out for him to go in, go to school to become an athletic trainer. And by the time you're 30, you'll be a millionaire if you follow this plan. And that the greatest legacy that I believe I can leave my children is do what you love and make it big. <laughs> I turned trading into medicine into this. Is that, that. is that right? Is that what I tell you? Mm -hmm. Right? Pretty much. Just follow it. Follow, follow what you it. Do. And, work. and if I say no, don't. Just and then keep follow going. what's Greg's <laughs> advice? Huh? What does he tell you? What does Greg tell you? Keep hustling, man. There you go. Just keep grinding. <laughs> Grind yeah. and hustle. Yeah. Don't yeah. stop. Yeah. Grind and hustle, boy. It would be, it'd be <laughs> persist. Grind and hustle. Persist. That's persist it, in marriage, persist in faith, persist in health, persist in what and you learn. want. And learn. Keep learning. Because, you know, one of the things, David came back, and I want to say thank you, Greg. Because David came to me, and he said, man, I had the greatest conversation with the big dreamer. And I and, and you ever notice he just sucks. He's just getting information from you. He wants to understand how Mark works. He hasn't gotten Dan yet. He gets Dan tomorrow. But he's just like he wants to learn. He goes, man, That's right. you know, Big Dreamer's I'll got read. some good ideas. I like what he's doing here, yeah. and I want to try. One thing, David, I pushed David out of cage because David, first time he started working with me, I said, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this, this, and this, and we're gonna do it in 30 days. Man, I thought he's gonna have a heart attack at a spot. He goes, we can't do that. A hundred reasons we couldn't do it. We did it in 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. We built a business in 30 days that should have not been possible. Yeah, that was it. 100 yeah. things going on in yeah. the yeah. line. Why well, couldn't do it? Things to do. Here, and, you know, and and now, that also shows it's, a belief. So yeah. you, some people, right. sometimes people will say, say to me, well, how? Much, you're not, even if you, you're a billion dollar company and you're paying me a million dollars, my job's not to tell you the how. That's right. You, you're <laughs> going to come up with the how. Well, that's the power of belief. You. That's yeah. when you believe yeah. the how happens. The how the, is none of your yeah. business. Yeah, that's but you, because you don't believe, you don't get to a spot where you can even 
how your way to success, right? You, you're, you're not even, you're not, and so I think that's, that's the, your job is to believe and to work your ass off, and, right? right? And there's actual laws to this. If you look at the steps of intention, and intention's a goal, you have to set your intentions with a purpose. There has to be a reason you're willing to step outside that cage and step away from your tribe and do what you gotta do. But then, the step number two, you've got to acclimate to the energy of that already being done. You don't have to figure out how to do it. Because step three is, you gotta get out of the way. You don't have to do God's work. You have to work. And every plan I've ever put together, never. I always get to the end, but it's never like I thought it well, was gonna that's, be. That's yes. the secret power of meditation. For yes. everyone listening, wherever the cameras yep. are now, See, see, we, see, don't see, see we, we go into a business plan, or even this evening, some people are looking at this and going, they're asking themselves this question, does this apply to me? So that's the wrong question. It's not does what we said apply, it's how does it apply? Yes. How does it apply? And the meditation forces you in these moments. Like for me, I'm sitting in church, I'm getting great business ideas. I feel ashamed because this guy's up here passionately giving me stuff and I'm like, because my butt's in a seat yeah. and I can't move and hopefully can't check my email because that's rude, I'm not having ideas that I'm poking into my phone because I've given my, exactly, I've given, got, that's in the shower. Yeah. You the running, it. it's no, your how. Like, yeah. I, I wrote it down in a little note. So many people don't yeah. do anything in life because they always say, how can I do it? Exactly. I don't have a college. No, Nietzsche, a Nietzsche, Nietzsche said, Nietzsche said, when you discover your why in life, you can endure any how. Yeah. Yeah. Stop worrying how are you gonna be. How was I going to be own a restaurant? No one's ever done that. Two hundred later. Yeah. How? Right. Two hundred later. How can I be a speaker when I didn't speak to I was twelve years old? Didn't ask my wife thirty years ago to marry me. How was I going to do it? I just did it. That's right. Nike says it best. The just guy back there has the shirt says, "I do it. <laughs> just do it. Just get out there and do it." Les Brown always told me, he says, young man, anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. That's right. Until yeah. you get it right. Yeah. We all done it wrong at first, Oof. and we're still doing it wrong. That's but right. we keep trying, we keep pushing, we keep grinding, we keep hustling. Now I get paid a lot more money to do it wrong. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you've learned all the way. you got to go through terrible yeah. on the way to becoming yeah. great. I guess like the bonus question, it says, what's each of you guys' favorite place to vacation? And I guess that's a good way to end this, huh? Mine? Amsterdam. 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 I, I, we go every year. I don't know what it is. Amsterdam. You're, you're talking live. That's not why. Amsterdam. Yeah, not why I'm talking live? You think I'm going to say? No. Amster you ever been to Amsterdam? Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. Yeah. I go there. I like to write. We, sometimes we'll say three or four weeks. I like to write. I like to work there. That's my place. Yeah. I love you Long guys, You guys all think it's the bad stuff. No. You know what? No. That's no. it. No. I, 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 the architecture, the My wife's watching this yeah. thing. I love, Las, listen, I love yeah. Las Vegas, and I don't drink, and I don't gamble. Yeah. 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 I love being around people, and Las yeah. Vegas, La, uh, um, uh, Times Square, yeah. Yeah. I love being around people. And you listen, do, don't you? I do. I love. <laughs> I could sit here with you guys all night. Yeah. They were getting mad. I know they're getting mad at me, like my wife and nieces, Wendy and Doc, because I spoke to everyone. I got pictures with yeah. with a couple wearing all oh, these no, nice. I night. love talking to people. Line. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and I think it's because and I think it's because I, I was quiet all of my life, and now I'm like. So I love voice. Las Vegas. I just said to just watch people. That's what I love. Uh, I would say I'm, I'm a I'm a sucker for any place warm. So, Cable Beach and Paradise Island, nice, amazing. It's where I got married. Nice. Also, a, but you can been make, the last you years. can make vacation where you're at. Yeah. I, I once heard an old couple. But where's your favorite? Yeah. Where's your favorite what, place? Though, what, was the question. You just said where I'm yeah, living. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, but but so, but so many Sarah people Leon. think so many people think that they have to go to the, I met an 80 year old couple, they, they always wanted to go to Eiffel Tower, they live in, in Columbus, Ohio. They wanted to go to Paris, but they couldn't, they couldn't afford it. They had 14 kids, great people, oh. sent them all to college, they couldn't. So I said, what are you gonna do about it? They said, you know what? Kings Island's amusement park. They have one third of the Eiffel Tower. They went at 86 years old, they got wine, cheese, and crackers, they and they sat that. underneath there. So don't think you have to go to Paris to That's do awesome. that. That's awesome. That's a great story. So, Where's yours, Mark? Vacation. My favorite is Sierra Leone, West Africa, where my wife was from. And years. guess what? This is why you don't watch the news and all that crap or let it influence you or dwell on it. Everyone said, don't go there. You're going to get Ebola. You're going to die. It was like the most beautiful place, the most beautiful beaches, private beaches, mango trees. It was incredible. 
And he had servants, I saw it. <laughs> you had servants? They actually do. I, I was hoping my, my kids were going to see like the poverty there and come back. And like a lot of people there have like drivers and cooks and they're like, they, their lesson from Africa travel. was like, why don't we yes, have tra cooks at travel home? Travel is the new like, job. Right. I, everybody should try to travel. Even when you're young, you should try to travel. I remember, you know, being in the Philippines and looking, you know, it's really seeing things like that, traveling to Peru, traveling to Panama, traveling, you know, around the world. We, we travel everywhere. The but travel, just, you see things. The Dalai Lama. And you Lama. appreciate, you appreciate so much more when you come The Dalai Lama like said, it. once a year you should go one road you've never been on. Yeah, so important. Can I run there? So, you can run done? there. You can run there. <laughs> Good. Are Ooh, we finally. Are we, are we out? We out? Yes, Mark, take it away. Mark, so Mark I, I, I just want to say thank you, honestly, to thank everyone to the that crew. came here, to the live stream, to the crew. Awesome, the crew. That, this yeah, was I a long, it, long. You thank you to great. all the speakers, and we'll be doing this a year down the line. Yeah. Stay Next tuned, year, folks. Same place, everyone, same give time. yourself thank a round you. of applause. Thank you. And we're out.